Hello everyone, welcome to the Splendor tutorial. Today I am going to show you some tricks for working with the Node Editor. The Node Editor in Blender is used for compositing and there are two main ways to get to the Node Editor. First of all, you could use this little uh, button down here and choose Node Editor. And the other way would be to choose a screen layout up here and use the compositing layout. I'm going to use the default layout right here. And when working with the node editor, make sure that use nodes down here is checked. And I also like to use a backdrop. Now, when you are getting into the node editor, you will probably see that your connections between the nodes are way more curved than they are with mine. And that's because I've set the user preferences in a way to make these connections more straight because I like it that way. And you can do this by entering the user preferences, choose um, themes, and node editor down here and then under noodle curving you can adjust the straightness or the amount of curving of these connections now if you want to add a node you simply press shift a just like in the 3d view and you could um, input several filters, blur, or scale, translate, rotate, and so on. And let me give it a quick render so I can see. These, uh, this right here is an input node that's showing us the render result. And this is the composite output that will be shown when you render the image. And Let's add a blur node. Choose fast Gaussian and let's say blur 5.5. And if I render it now, you can see it's blurred a little bit. Now, of course, always rendering is a bit cumbersome when you're trying to adjust some values in your composite. And that where the backdrop comes in, you see down here it's selected, but it doesn't do anything right now. We need to add a viewer node, a output viewer node to see something, but there's a much quicker way to do that. If you press um, Control, Shift and left click on any of these nodes, a viewer node will be added automatically and it will be automatically connected to the node that you've just clicked on. And then if you click again on another node, it will be connected to this. That's a very quick way to switch between nodes and see the, what they do in the background. You can also press left click several times, control shift left click several times on a node and switch between the image the alpha output or the Z output. Okay. Uh, the next thing that's quite helpful, if I want another blur node, I can select it with right click and press shift D and it's going to be duplicated and have the same values. And if I increase these values, let's say 50, you can see here's a little bit blur, here's a lot of blur. And if we say we don't want the connection between this blur node and the image layer right here, we can simply press control and left mouse button and then we see a little knife and can cut this connection. We can cut several connections at once, just control, left click. Let me redo these connections quickly. 
And let's say now we want to clean up this a little bit. A nice thing to do is to add a new connection point right here. And if you click shift and left click, you can draw a line like this and there will be a new connection point which you can move around with the right mouse button. Let me quickly add a mix node with, let's say, add. And shift D to duplicate. Come on. And as you can see, by the way, I can drag this around with the middle mouse button pressed down, the mouse wheel pressed down. And you can see I've created from two blur nodes and two color mix nodes that are set to add. I've created a blur effect, uh, a sorry, a glow effect for this cube right here. Now, if I wanted to delete one of these um, mix nodes, I could press X and it would disappear completely and all the connections would disappear. But if, let me undo this quickly, Control Z. Let's say I want to delete a node but keep the connection I can select it and press Control X and as you can see it deletes the node but keeps uh, recreates a connection where the node originally was. Now if you have uh, several nodes like these right here, I can select them with shift and right click on everyone. All these nodes right here together create this glow effect. Now to organize my structure a little bit better, I could um, add them to a node group. I could do so by choosing make group. By the way, most options that I have done with uh, shortcuts you can also do by choosing them from this menu right here. Or I can just click Control G. This has created a new node group. And if I hit tab, then as you can see, it's now connected and created a single node group from all these notes for our glow effect and let's say I want to name this group glow I can do that right here and if I right here as you can see we have a group input node and a group output node, but uh, the group output had two outputs for basically the same, just the same um, image basically. So we can select one. Let me first cut it right here. And Uh, I thought I could delete it, but apparently not. But I can remain in the menu right here. I could rename it. Let's say I'll get to that later. Um, first of all, let me fix these sockets that we don't need. I can ungroup these nodes quickly 
and if I delete all the connections that have been there and then reselect all these nodes and group them we now have a completely empty group input and group output and let me put the create that one image as a group output and create one image as an input you can create new inputs if you connect if you connect this empty socket right here to a new one i need the input here the input here and let's say i also want to be able to adjust the factor of these mix nodes directly one for here one for here and let's call this fact first it's the factor of the first mix node and let's call this one fact second now i can just connect these and tap to edit i have forgotten one connection this right here and now we see there's a glow and i can adjust the amount of mix between the blurred image and the original image with the factor second and the amount of mix between the big glow and the small glow with factor first you can see even if i turn this down to zero there's still a little bit of blurriness around here and if you're using the node editor and you want to render never forget to actually connect what you want in the end to the composite output node uh, because otherwise the render result will show nothing i can show this quickly if this is disconnected and i render it will just show a black screen but if it is connected you will get the cube with this nice glow that's all for now i hope you found this helpful Goodbye and enjoy Blender.